Are robots gonna replace plumbers and electricians in the future? To be honest, yeah. It just may not be as soon as they're hoping. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and ring the bell so you don't miss out on anything. Stay till the end, I'm gonna tell you several trades or professions that to be honest, if you're in it, you might wanna think about getting into the trades. So first of all, we've all heard of artificial intelligence, AI. It's out there. It thinks, it modifies its thinking, it does different things. It is truly, like it says, an artificial intelligence. Now, what are they able to do with that? Well, right now they're able to do so much with it. And not only that, with the usage of AI and technology, they're able to eliminate a lot of jobs. Think about it. We see these shows on TV where a robot is actually picking up boxes and moving them. Now, I know that sounds kind of strange. It just picks up a box and moves it but that's a job I had at Kraft Foods right after I got out of high school. A job I did, now a robot is doing. What job do you do? And ask yourself this, could a robot do what I do? Now luckily, I'm a plumber. Most of it a robot couldn't do, but I do know from being in plumbing and pipe fitting and welding, robots are doing a lot of it. There are actually machines that weld pipe. There's actually machines that cut pipe. There's machines that cut pipe, put it together, weld it, and do all the above. So we've got to start looking at what other things could a robot do that's going to take away work from all of us. And it all leads back to artificial intelligence and technology. Remember to stay to the end where I answer two questions in two minutes and give more value to you. The big thing that makes it hard for robots to do some of these jobs is hand-eye coordination. Now, being in the skilled trades, we understand you've got to have hand-eye coordination. A lot of time, we have to reach up into a spot where you can't even see. You've got to have a tool. You've got to be able to take a nut off or twist wires together or do different things. So sometimes hand-eye coordination, flexibility, being able to get in a position where a lot of times a lot of people couldn't just get, that's part of it. And are you gonna be able to get robots down under a house and let them crawl around? Let them inspect the entire system? And I don't know, maybe you can. What innovative features does this revolutionary robot have? What I focused on the most during the development stage was the mechanism that would keep it running upright. But right now, plumbers, electricians, HVAC techs, residential service providers have to have good dexterity. We have to be hand-eye coordinated. We have to be flexible. We've got to be able to get in some situations that maybe some people couldn't get into. Now, another big thing, and it's great with skilled trades, but also like nurses, doctors, people like that. You've got to have empathy. When you're talking to a customer, you have to understand that by giving them options, that's also options on price levels. Some people can't write a check for whatever it is that needs to be repaired. You've got to be empathetic. You've got to understand that. You've got to hopefully have your company set up where you have financing available, where you have other options. I remember one of the first times I went out on a job, a lady had just bought a house and it flooded. Her sewer stopped up. She had raw sewage coming up in her floor. Her son calls her at work. She's freaking out. By the time I get there, she's already home. She's crying. She's hysterical. And I'm like, ma'am, look, we deal with this all the time. Don't worry about it. We're going to get this taken care of. By the time I left an hour and a half later, she was sitting on the couch, drinking a glass of wine, reading a book, and gave me my first five-star review. Understanding your customer's feelings, understanding that, look, we deal with this all the time, is something robots probably aren't gonna be able to do. No. Here's what's coming. We're coming up on a new industrial revolution. Robots are taking over a lot of the work. And if you think that's not true, I want you to start thinking about this. We're already looking at cars that drive themselves. Tesla's got them. What's gonna keep them from designing an 18-wheeler truck that can drive itself? Now, instead of a truck driver being able to work maybe eight, 10, 12 hours a day, that truck's gonna be able to go nonstop. Auto, which Uber bought this summer, made history with this truck. It completed the world's first truck autonomous delivery in Fort Collins, Colorado, to Colorado Springs, 120 miles away. Cars are being built by robots now. Don't get me wrong, they've got people involved, but they're gonna fine tune this to where they need less people and more robots. Cars are gonna be built better, 
They're gonna be built faster. That machine can run 24 hours a day, seven days a week. You shut it down for maintenance, oil it, lube it, clean it up, whatever it is you need to do, plug it back in, here it goes again. What trade are you in? What profession are you in? And I'm serious when I say look at it and think, could a robot do this and how could it? Now, I'm gonna read some different things off, and I'm actually picking my paper up so I can read them. Are you in a trader profession that could easily be taken over by robots? And these are some that I found listed that could be taken over pretty easily, and I want you to think about them. Customer service can all be automated. We talk to robots all the time now. Dangerous jobs, sewer inspections, crawling up in a sewer line, doing different things like that. Robots can do that. They've got cameras that can take high definition pictures and videos of the inside of it. Delivery, we've already talked about it a while ago. Amazon's looking at using drones for delivery. That takes out that delivery driver, that truck driver. The drone can fly it over, drop it off, bring it back, pick up something else. So my big tip to you, start thinking about getting into the trades now because this will be one of the latest jobs, one of the longest lasting jobs that robots won't be able to do. So now let's do two questions, two minutes. This is from Sam. Sam says, hi Roger, are all math exams with UA Plumbing Union similar? I have an upcoming exam and wanted to study on the right information. All I know so far is that it's 50 questions timed for an hour. Well, the good thing is that gives you plenty of time to do it. The thing is, most of the plumbing math is really pretty easy. Now there is a UPC study guide that has a plumbing math section in it that I think is one of the best ones. Now I've looked at it, I've looked at the IPC, they've both got plumbing math. I've actually ordered a book before plumbing math and gone through and done it and really it's not that complicated and it's easy to learn. So if you really want to get in and you want to do well, I definitely recommend buying one of those three books and practicing everything in it. Next question is from Josh H. Josh says, a quick question. My father-in-law was replacing a part in the water heater and when he was disassembling everything, he was removing the pilot light gas line wire and when pulling it out, it snapped. Is there any way to repair that or do we need to replace the whole unit? Or do we need to replace the whole unit? Basically, it snapped under the tip of it. He went gentle, but it broke off. Any videos showing that? Those wires are very delicate. I don't know that you will be able to replace it or not. It's probably the wire going in for your piezo switch, your electronic igniter. I would try to contact an appliance manufacturer and see if they have that replacement part. Look at what brand your water heater is, contact their technical support division and ask them. You're probably going to be able to replace it, but you're going to have to get the right part to do it. I hope that that helps you out a lot. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this. If you've got a question you'd like to see in two questions, two minutes, go to twoquestions2minutes.com and ask your question there. I'm Roger Wakefield, Lead AP, the expert plumber. I'll see you in the next video if you don't get flushed.